Hey guys, it's me, and I'm here today to talk about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. A year and a half late, I know. 2018 was a bit of a roller coaster for me. Emotionally, I was going through a transition. I didn't always have the energy that I wanted to do certain things that I liked. But now that I've had some time to process it, and I actually decided to watch this movie again last night because I'm actually planning on doing a certain video where I rank the Spider-Man movies from worst to best. Into the Spider-Verse is definitely gonna be in there, but I realized that I hadn't watched it since I saw it in theaters. So I watched it again last night to refresh my memory. I quite like this movie. I think it's really, really good. And it's one of the best Spider-Man movies that I think has ever been made next to the first two films with Tobey Maguire. And just in case you guys haven't seen it, there's gonna be spoilers in this review. Won't talk about everything, but you have been warned. So basically it tells the story of Miles Morales, who is one of the other Spider-Men besides Peter Parker, and he gets caught in the middle of these shenanigans where the multiverse is split open due to this certain thing that happens with the Kingpin trying to bring something back to his life. And all these different spider people like Peter Parker, Spider-Gwen, Spider-Pig, the noir Spider-Man, and so on, come into Miles Morales' universe, and they have to figure out a way to get everybody back home and stop the Kingpin from using the machine, which could therefore unravel the very fabric of the space-time continuum and destroy the entire universe! And Miles Morales, who's been bitten by a radioactive spider, trying to figure out some way, somehow, what exactly his place is amongst this multiverse of other types of spider people. Now, those of you who are not new to my channel, you know how much Spider-Man means to me. But for those of you who might be tuning in for the very first time, Spider-Man is... Well, he just means the world to me. He's been not just my favorite superhero of all time, but my favorite fictional character of all time ever since I was 12 years old when I saw the 2002 Spider-Man film. And then Spider-Man 2 was just even better. I mean, do I have to say that it's one of the best, if not the best comic book movie ever made? Ever since they hit their peak in 2004, Sony hasn't really had a great track record with the Spider-Man films. You, you can watch my videos if you want to know my full thoughts. <laughs> and then we had Tom Holland show up as Spider-Man, and I think he's a good fit for the character. His solo movies, though, haven't really made a good impression on me. I'll save that for another video for another time, but I prefer him in the team-up movies personally in the MCU. Basically what I'm trying to say is that Ever since Spider-Man 2, which in my opinion was the last good Spider-Man movie that we've had up until this one, Sony, like I said, hasn't had a great track record. So when I saw the trailers for this at the time, my thought was, well, it, it, it looks fun, but animation movies, I don't really go out of my way to watch them all the time, because a lot of times I find them very kitty and just nonsense thrown on the screen for the sake of colors. Not to say that they're all like that, but you get what I mean. And it was Miles Morales. I've never really been that interested in Miles Morales, at least until the Spider-Man PS4 game, which actually made me appreciate the character a lot more than I did prior to that. Gratefully though, this movie is really good, and I'm really, really happy that it turned out the way it did. For those of you who don't know, Miles Morales is this young kid living in Brooklyn, and he's going to this really fancy school, which he doesn't really feel like he fits in too well. His father, Jefferson Davis, is a cop in the NYPD, and they don't really get along too good, which makes him want to hang out with his uncle Aaron, his dad's brother. Aaron and Jeff don't really get along anymore like they used to, which naturally puts Miles at odds with his father. He's just a typical teenager trying to find his way through life and trying to find some way to fit into this really awkward situation that he's in. But just like Peter Parker, Miles Morales is clearly destined for something greater than what he has. Just like any other other protagonists we root for in a movie like this, or any other film. So once he gets bitten by the radioactive spider and is trying to figure out what exactly is going on with his body, he stumbles into this big battle between the Green Goblin and Spider-Man, voiced by Chris Pine, which I thought that was really cool. I wish that we got a little more of that version of the character. Spidey realizes that Miles has the same powers as he does, and he says, hey, you know what? Once we're done here, I'll teach you the ropes. There's this big machine that the Kingpin's operating, trying to get something done, but then a big explosion happens and the machine gets destroyed. Peter Parker's severely wounded, gives Miles a piece of the technology, and tells him to get it as far away from here as he could. Then Kingpin shows up, and right before our eyes, kills Peter Parker. Spider-Man actually dies in the first act of the movie. Watching it at the time that I saw this in theaters, and even watching it right now, it's one of those things that makes you go, oh. My. God. The city holds a memorial service for him, and he's buried at the local church. And then later that night, while Miles visits his grave, another guy shows up, and it turns out to be Peter B. Parker from another dimension. Because as it's later revealed in the movie, during the confrontation between Spidey and the Green Goblin, the machine that they were in involved something to do with alternate dimensions and time travel, which caused a ripple effect through all the space-time continuum and brought all these different spider people into Miles Morales' world. Peter B. Parker being one of them, voiced by Jake Johnson. And they all have to band together to get back to their universes and destroy the machine for good before Wilson Fisk can do anything with it. Now, if any of you guys out there are fans of Miles Morales, don't 
kill me because I don't really know a whole ton about him. Just from what I've seen in this movie and in the PS4 game, I don't really read comics as much. But I gotta say, the PS4 Spider-Man game got me on board with the character. This movie, I say, solidifies me on the character overall because he's definitely not Peter Parker as far as like his intelligence and academic science and whatnot. Miles, as we see in this movie, is very much into graffiti and artistry and so on and so forth, but he's portrayed to be a very endearing and likable kid and someone who, despite not being the most smartest kid in the room, it's easy for the audience to root for him because of his spirit his heart, in that respect, very similar to Peter Parker. The way he tries to fit in with the other kids in his class and nobody really takes him seriously, just like Peter Parker, and that's how I felt when I was in school. And I think a lot of us felt that way too in some fashion. And I like the teacher-student relationship that he develops with Peter B. Parker. And Peter B. Parker, it's a really interesting take on the character because this version of the character is in his late 30s, early 40s, going through a really harsh depression because his Aunt May has passed away, MJ divorced him because he was too afraid to take the next step in their relationship, and he spends a lot of time eating junk food and crying himself to sleep every night while wearing his costume, which definitely needs to be washed, man, seriously. The complete opposite of the first Peter Parker that we saw earlier on in the movie, voiced by Chris Pine, who was in his mid to late 20s and had been doing it for about 10 years or so, and seemingly very content with his life, perfectly balancing both his personal life and his superhero life, and never really seemed to fear that he was gonna lose the people closest to him because of his responsibilities. And I think the differences between Peter B. Parker and the original Peter Parker that we see in the film is that Chris Pine's version of the character is basically an idealized version of Spider-Man. Kind of perfect. Too perfect, actually. A Spider-Man that doesn't really have much to learn? You can't really tell many stories with that kind of character. If he's already got life figured out, then where else can you go with that? And Peter B. Parker? That's more like the Peter Parker that we're used to reading about. Because this is something that I have a problem with in the Spider-Man fandom. They seemingly want Peter Parker to be perfect, who has very little to no problems. <laughs> Peter B. Parker, voiced by Jake Johnson, he's basically the embodiment of why Spider-Man is such an endearing character, because he constantly gets pounded and pounded into the ground, and yet somehow he manages to maintain some sense of optimism. Even though this one has a pretty harsher view of life, there's still a slight ounce of optimism left in him, as you see as he's trying to teach Miles how to best master his powers, as they're swinging through the forest, being chased by Olivia Octavius, or also Doc Ock, or him seeing Miles' universe's version of MJ and trying to apologize to her for not being the responsible one like he should have. Despite the fact that he gets knocked down so many times, he still manages to find a way to come back up. And that's what really makes us engaging, because in some shape or form, we've all experienced times in our lives like that. And as you see with the other spider people, like Spider-Gwen, Spider-Man Noir, Penny Parker, and also... Is that a... cartoon pig? Focus! It fits into the overall theme and message that the movie's trying to communicate. We all have it in us to be Spider-Man. Anybody can be Spider-Man. We may not be as smart as Peter Parker, we may not be as intelligent, but if we have that fighting heart that he has, then there's a hero in all of us. And this movie takes quite a long time for Miles to finally get a handle on his powers, which I actually really like that because in the first Amazing Spider-Man and heck, even the 2002 Spider-Man, we see Peter Parker getting used to his powers, but then about 40 or 45 minutes into the movie, he seems to have it mostly under control at that point. Now, in the 2002 film, I understand why that they kept it the way they did because they didn't want to slow the movie down by putting so much focus on like how he managed to master his powers or make the costume. And plus in 2002, they were under certain kinds of restrictions with the genre, so it worked in that movie. I'm not trying to dismiss it at all, but in this one, I really do like that they show that it takes a long time for Miles, who's especially a young kid, trying to figure out exactly how can he ma best master his powers and how can he make them unique to his own personality, which he struggles at one point trying to prove to the other spider people that he is just as capable as they are in being a heroic figure. And at the climax of the movie, he's finally able to prove it to everybody. Now, probably the biggest spoiler in this movie is that the Night Prowler, who's the henchman of the Kingpin, is actually Miles Morales' Uncle Aaron, voiced by Mahershala Ali. Uh, sir, if you're watching this, I apologize if I butchered your name. I really tried. I'm sorry. I tried. Miles gets along really well with his Uncle Aaron, but he's shocked and really crushed to find out that this guy's working for the Kingpin. Then when Night Prowler has a chance to kill him on the rooftop, Miles reveals his identity to him, and Aaron realizes how much he screwed up, and he can't do anything to change it. And this moment when he realizes that the young spider kid is his nephew. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, man. It, it, it gets me. And he ends up being shot and killed by the Kingpin, and he tells Miles, you're on your way. You're the best of all of us. Just keep going. 
And that's one thing that really surprised me with this movie. The undercurrent of emotion in this film is so, so well realized. Miles' relationship with his uncle, Peter B. Parker, meaning Miles' universe's version of Aunt May who lost her nephew, Peter Parker, both sharing some kind of common grief with each other, and Miles' dad, Jeff, seeing his dead brother lying on the ground in an alleyway. Hey. No. No. This is the kind of stuff that you wouldn't really see in a family film like this. And I gotta give major props to the filmmakers for going to these lengths because had they toned it back, it wouldn't have had the same effect. But it's not just the emotional stuff. The movie has a really good sense of humor, like introducing the different types of spider people. They find really clever and unique ways to inject humor into the way they narrate their backstory. Like Chris Pine's version, for instance, has a lot of cool references to the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. And I'm really, just really glad that Hollywood's acknowledging the greatness of the original three movies, well, the first two at least. Such as the great power and responsibility line by Cliff Robertson, these visual nods to the train scene in Spider-Man 2, and the car crashing through the window, and this. We don't really talk about this. <laughs> and the, that type of narration you get with Peter B. Parker, Spider-Pig, Spider-Gwen, Penny Parker, and even the Spider-Man Noir, who is voiced by Nicolas Cage, which is just so bizarre, but actually really cool. And in fact, when I first saw this, and after hearing him talk for a while, I went, Nicolas Cage. Why'd you put me in this universe? I want to go back to mine. So with the help of Peter B. Parker and the other spider people and Miles' father, Miles manages to destroy the dimensional time machine of sorts before the Kingpin can actually bring his deceased wife and son back from another reality. The machine's destroyed and the Kingpin is arrested. Everybody goes back to their own dimension and Peter B. Parker decides to go back with MJ to give it another try, which is the perfect ending to Peter's arc. Both Miles and Peter learn from each other that despite all that they've been through, they still have it in them to have a chance to be the best version of themselves that they can be and Miles becomes the new Spider-Man for New York City, and the movie ends. And the post credit scene, Spider-Man 2099 going to the 1966 Spider-Man version, one of the best post credit scenes I've ever seen, had me rolling, yeah, enough said. <laughs> as far as negatives go, I would have liked more with Wilson Fisk. I do like the idea that he's trying to bring his wife and son back, but I felt like they glossed over it to some degree, and I. Would have liked just a little more time with it. Oh, also, before I forget, the animation style for this film is gorgeous. Essentially, it does feel like a comic book come to life, and there's a slightly blurred, out-of-focus effect to it, like it's meant to tribute the badly printed comics of the 1960s and 70s. And the frame rate feels a little bit slower in certain scenes. Sometimes it feels really fluid, but sometimes it feels like the frame rate drops a little bit. But I also think it was intentional because, like I said, it's actually meant to make you feel like you're watching a comic book come to life. All in all, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is one of the best Spider-Man movies that I think we've ever seen. I wouldn't call it my favorite, as some people have said, even though I wouldn't necessarily argue with that, but my favorite is still the first two Spider-Man movies. I mean, no, nothing could ever touch those, but hey, that's just my opinion at least. If it's your favorite, hey, that's cool. I get it. And apparently this is getting a sequel. I'm all for it. Let's do it. Those are my thoughts on Into the Spider-Verse. What'd you guys think of the movie? Do you love it, like it, think it's all right, or do you hate it? Whatever the case is, comment below and tell me your thoughts, and I'll see you all very soon.